Welcome. This is where we come together uh, as Democrats in fellowship to listen and learn. I am your announcer. I'm Ashley. Um, and we are happy to have you all here today uh, to discuss 779. All right. Ward Curtin, a native Oklahoman, is the field director of YES on State Question 779 campaign. In his 16-year career, in addition to his extensive work in Oklahoma, Curtin has also worked in Colorado, Washington, Texas, Nevada, and North Carolina on statewide legislative, mayoral, and ballot initiative campaigns. State Question 779 creates a constitutionally protected fund that will invest about $500 million annually in Oklahoma schools throughout a one cent sales tax. K through 12 schools would receive 69.5% of the fund to increase teacher pay by $5,000. The measure will also provide funding for local districts to determine how best to address the teacher shortages for hard to fill positions and for schools to implement proven strategies aimed at improving high school graduation rates and reading in early grades. None of the funds can be spent to increase superintendent, in superintendent pay, excuse me. Uh, please welcome Ward Curtin. Well, it's good to be back among friends. Uh, she said, my name is Ward. I, uh, I grew up in Watonga, Oklahoma, which is out northwest. Uh, my mom was a teacher. Uh, I went to school in Tahlequah, uh, at Northeastern State University. Uh, and I thought I was going to coach high school football and teach English. Um, but I was in a political science class and signed up for an internship, so I apologize you're stuck with me here today. Um, so I've, uh, I'm very proud of Oklahoma um, and our traditions, but one of the things that I'm not proud of is how systemically over decades we've underfunded education. Um, but it became personal to me. I was the baby in my family. I have two older sisters. Um, and then uh, about 18 years ago, uh, I had a nephew that was born. And so he was a new baby of the family. And, uh, uh, you know, so we've watched him grow up. And uh, he graduates college. He's going to be a senior next year. And uh, his mom's a teacher. She teaches music at uh, Prairie Bell Elementary, which is in the Deer Creek system. And, uh, you know, I. I've helped his mom out over the years with Christmas and things like that, because we all know the teachers struggle. Um, and we began to talking about, <clears throat> we were, uh, it was, uh, we were hanging around her house one day and I was talking to Patrick about where he wanted to go to school. And we've known where he's want, wanted to go to school since the kid was 10 years old. Sooner he's sooner born, sooner bred. Susan, he's sooner born and sooner bred. And uh, he, he wants to go, he wants to go to OU, of course. <laughs> Perfect. We want him to. Uh, but later that night, my sister and I were talking, and uh, she doesn't know how she's going to pay for it. Single mom, uh, you know, she's got 19 years in the classroom, has a degree, and is in a very good school district. All his grades are right, and she doesn't know if she can afford to put it through school at Oklahoma's four-year public university on a teacher's salary. Um, so. That's one of the reasons why I'm here. But, you know, just to get to know a little bit more about you guys, do I have any teachers in the room? Or retired teachers? Do I have any uh, college yeah. kids? All right. Uh, do I have any parents? Do I have any grandparents? So this touches us on a lot of levels, just directly, not to mention the societal impact that public education has on things like crime, health care, those sorts of things. So, that's why I'm here today, and it, that's not just my sister's story or my family's story. If you talk to a teacher, every one of them has the same path about uh, class, class size is too large, so they can't pay attention to they need to, uh, about teacher leaving the profession, overwhelming. I, either they leave the profession or they go to another state. Every state that borders Oklahoma, they get a raise by crossing the, crossing the line. In, uh, in some school districts in Texas, their starting teacher pay is equivalent of what a 25-year teacher with a doctorate would make in Oklahoma. Teachers are leaving, and this is a generational problem. 
because they aren't coming back. Um, the teachers that do stay, God bless them, but morale is at an all-time low. Um, and they don't know how much longer they can afford to keep doing this. They feel like they're disrespected by the public. And uh, we keep on putting more kids in their classrooms and expecting more out of them. This is, we're, we're doing this wrong. And part of the reason that we're being forced to do that, larger class sizes, is that we, the, the, the state's leadership, has chosen to remove money out of education for whatever reason. Either they lowered overall tax receipts or uh, they had you know, different ideologies about how to fix it. But the, the problem is, is that we don't have enough money to make the steps forward in education. And it's been that way for a long time, and we have to make a big step. So I'm here to talk to you. I'm in favor of State Question 779. I'm going to talk a little bit about the policy. I'm going to be as neutral as I can, but you know I have an inherent bias here, um, uh, to explain it and what it does. And then during questions, I'll answer it as, to the best of my ability. But also with this group, I'd like to talk a little bit about the politics um, and what this may mean for a progressive movement going forward in this state. So uh, let me start with the basics of what State Question 779 does. Um, it creates a constitutionally protected education improvement fund. Um, into that fund, it raises the state sales tax by one cent. All the money that comes from those collections goes straight into a fund that is siloed off. And that money can be used for a couple specific things. <clears throat> Number one, the biggest piece of the pie goes K through 12. 70% of the revenue collected goes into programs for K through 12. The biggest piece of that is a teacher salary raise. It has to be $5,000 right off the top. It's written into the amendment. Uh, on top of that, if there is if there's money left over, uh, here in Oklahoma, we have what's called the state aid formula. Um, and the state aid formula takes the education budget overall and factors in things like uh, kids who are on free or, free or reduced lunches, districts that have a lot of that, or districts that have a lot of English as a second language learners, or other problems, environmental pro factors that may impact a kid's ability to learn even outside the classroom. And so through the formula, poor districts as a result Get a, get a bigger piece of the pie so it's more equitable to help those schools that are you know, challenged for a lot of reasons, they get more financial resources. So through that formula, the excess money goes through it. And uh, local districts will have uh, flexibility to determine programs that can do a couple of things. Uh, retain, retain teachers, number one, or recruit teachers, or do things that increase high school graduation rates, or grade level reading, uh, or uh, college slash career readiness. So to make sure that they're better off to go to college. So that's where, that's where the biggest chunk of the money goes is to the salaries and those programs I just mentioned, reading, graduation, and preparedness for college and career. 70% um, of the money goes to that. About, sorry, let me look at my notes here so I get it right. So about 22% of our overall, of our penny sales tax goes to uh, career tech and higher ed to help things, number one, with, uh, again, to help with career readiness, and number two, to help with things like college affordability. Now, I don't know about, oh, it's been a few months now, but the Department of Commerce issued a report that here in Oklahoma, they, they surveyed employers. We have 85,000 jobs that employers have, they're funded, but they cannot fill here in the state because the workforce isn't there. And it's, you know, it's not just like astrophysicists that they can't find. It's everything from healthcare professionals and nurses to truck drivers, that there just aren't enough people to fill the jobs. And so as a result, our economy takes a hit right there. Um, and families take a hit because they don't have access or they aren't prepared coming out of our education system to, to do that. So uh, the, the, the remaining percentage that comes out, about 8%, I think it's technically it's 7.5, um, goes to <coughs> early childhood learning opportunities targeted towards low-income families. Um, 
So it's things like expanding access to pre-K, um, but it's also, again, going back to some of these environmental <coughs> concerns. First time parents and teaching them nutrition habits. Um, you know, aid towards single mothers to make sure that they, you know, this, they have training on simple stuff, how to schedule work, how to, you know, afford daycare, those sorts of things. So there's a piece of money that goes specifically, specifically towards my boss, I apologize. <laughs> That's an important call. No, <laughs> oh, David, I said hi. <laughs> So it, it goes specifically towards these at-risk or low-income children whenever, I think we're all, we're all familiar with the studies about the impact of early childhood education and what it means for a child's success going forward. So in a nutshell, that's the program. It's paid for by one cent sales tax that everybody pays. It, uh, and that's how the money is allocated. But there are, some, there, are, there are a couple of other important pieces here. She mentioned that it can't go towards superintendent salaries. Another important piece here is that everything, two more important pieces, I apologize. Every dollar is audited at the district level to make sure it's going towards those programs that voters, if they choose to approve this, have been promised it will go to. So graduation rates, reading, and college readiness and career preparedness, okay? If it doesn't go towards that, then you're subject to the you know, normal uh, uh, punishment that that you receive, you know, from the auditor's office if you're if you're out of line and spending money the, the other way. The other piece is that, like I said, it, all the money, whenever collected, goes into one fund, the Education Improvement Fund, and it's distributed on those percentages I just told you about. But, you know, all, if, if we've got this new bucket of funds and resources, the legislature can't come in and say, oh, we've got 600 million in the fund over here, let's cut, 600 million that we're currently giving to education and put it in, I don't know, build more private prisons or whatever they want to do. The money that we're spending now on education stays there. This money is on the top. This is important. They can't, they can't use the new money to supplant current funds. And, you know, somehow otherwise mess with kids. It's constitutionally protected. <clears throat> so that's the, that's the policy piece of it. That's the nuts and bolts. If I would encourage you to go to our website, yesfor779.org, and the first link at the top is an about section. You can go and see again the, the explanation I just gave you, but you can also download the actual question that you will be voting on. Read it all yourself. It's two and a half pages. A little bit of it's like lawyer gobbledygook, but I figured it out. What's the website? Sir? Yes for 779 dot org f-o-r uh, i'm yes f-o-r yeah that always gets me are we opening for questions we are not <laughs> um i have a couple more minutes on the thing i want to go of course and so that's the policy piece but there's in everything unfortunately even with education there's there's po there's political implications here as well number one yes the supplant language is there but we're you know i hate to go into a state and you build up an organization and it's election day and then I leave and nobody does anything with it. What this has done, what this crisis has forced is education groups to come together. Unfortunately, in recent years, that hasn't always been the case. Higher ed was fighting against career tech, it was fighting against K through 12, and it was divide and conquer. They're all on the same page on this. School board associations, superintendents association, teachers unions, uh, uh, parent-teacher alliance, um, every major education group that you would consider normally to be on our side is there and united in support of this effort. Um, that's important because if we win, then that success will, will force them to stick together on issues and make, you know, really the children's lobby, the education supporters, make them stronger at the state capitol in the next session. The other piece of that is if we, if we pass this, then the whole, you know, conservative mindset of that, like we've got to go lower taxes, people don't want taxes, that argument is blown out of the water. And we can start talking about real tax reform across a lot of different areas. Also politically, we're going to win some Republican districts. And uh, our advocates are going to be able to walk in in January into, into those offices and slide across the vote total and say, we won your district. 
so again, uh, I, I will wrap this up and then we'll go to questions if that's okay. We're putting a long term, this is not a one and done deal. This is not how the supporters of this election view it, that we need a different apparatus, a different approach. Um, and we've taken an issue that traditionally progressives have owned. We've taken an issue that Oklahoma voters want solved. And we've provided a viable solution to begin moving forward. I'm not promising you a silver bullet. This is a first step. You know, from here, we got to talk about tax reform. we got to fix funding in other areas. Uh, we have to get on the same page about what's, you know, what's to be expected of teachers and, and students in terms of, of high-stakes tests and things like that. Um, but we're creating a, a movement that won't go away either at the Capitol or at the ballot box going forward. That is our goal. But it is not, it is not the final solution here. But a teacher shortage has led to kids not reading at grade level, which has led to kids dropping out of high school, or when they leave high school, they're not actually prepared for college, which has created a workforce shortage, which is a, just, you know, we are on this cycle of self-destruction because we haven't made the jump and made the step to invest in our education system. That is my argument. I, uh, <laughs> I will answer as many questions as you want to throw at me. I will stay here until I've got a meeting at 2, so i got to leave at 10 till, 10 till 2. But other than that, uh, I, I do want to make one caveat. Like, I mean, I put out yard signs and recruit volunteers. I am not the policy expert on this campaign. Um, I'll try to answer the questions to the, best of your, to the best of my ability, but if I can't, I may have to follow up with you over email. Uh, but I, I commit to doing that, whether you're for me or against me. That's my yeah. And I think Ashley... I'll be monitoring the questions. <clears throat> what about the ones that are written down? Oh, this was for you to take notes. Um, <laughs> if you want to, if you oh. want me to read them out loud to you, that's that's fine too. Yeah. Is that what you guys want? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I'd like sure. to just ask yeah. my own. You want to ask him? Um, okay. So I read an article earlier this week that was saying Noble, if this passes will be um, at a 10.25% sales tax. Mm -hmm. And the concern I have with towns like Noble, they already are struggling to uh, make enough sales tax revenue to um, fund their city. And um, if things like this pass, you know, if I was a citizen of Noble, I would be leaving to go to Norman to shop if they had a slightly lower sales tax. They don't, though. They just passed an increase. Yeah. Well, I would be going to other cities around me that have lower sales taxes, or if I lived on a border of the state, I would be leaving to go across the border to shop, or shopping online as well, since we don't have um, enforced uh, usage tax, or um, not usage tax, but the online sales tax. Yeah. It's, yes, it's not enforced. So, um, what is the, what about this, um, how do you plan to address this concern of people shopping more online or shopping out of state to try to get around the increase in sales tax, which will affect the local city's budgets sure. as well. Let me, if, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to try to approach that. Too. Okay. Um, and I'm going to use, hey, I think it's similar, but I don't know the, the noble specific number, so I'm going to go back to Watonga, where I grew up, which is Blaine County. There are about seven schools in Blaine County. It's about 100 teachers total. Right? Follow them, we're getting 100, uh, a $5,000 pay raise then that's $500,000 direct into the local economy, right there. Number, number two, I, I mean, anybody who's done any sort of economic development, uh, looking into it, probably understands what's called the multiplier effect. That whenever you do raises in a local economy, that money multiplies. We're spending overall, the money multiplies, because the people have more money typically to spend, so they go down and they buy at my friend's hardware store. So he has more money to spend now, so he goes and advertises in the newspaper. So the newspaper has more money to spend, so they go and money on whatever newspapers do. So that money is 500000 So typically people estimate that new money, new spending like that, is a seven and a half per time multiplier. Now, I'm, let's keep the math simple here. $1.5 million, you know, if we just type, keep it times three, that $500,000 economic impact times three, which is half the normal multiplier. 1.5 million into a rural economy like that 
is a major shot in the arm right now. Um, in addition to uh, the harder to measure impact of providing quality education all the way across the state. So, that, so that's, that's the first one. The second one is a, is a, valid, is, is a valid point, but across the state we're pretty much at parity whenever it comes to sales taxes. Um, in general, online spending is, is increasing just as our behavior patterns change, more people are buying online. That's a, you know, ultimately that's a federal question. Um, the, but uh, if you try another method, people understand this. It's a penny, it goes towards the schools, and I know where it's going. Um, and they see it daily. Like the, you try to pass, say, a property tax, then we lose 70, 76 out of 77 counties. Because every farmer comes out against us. Um, you try to pass an income tax, and you, you lose a huge swath of bipartisan support. And it doesn't, it doesn't get up. Because we researched all this, because we, like, you know, this is a big gamble. If we, if we don't win, then people at the Capitol can say they don't want more taxes and, you know, they really don't care about it. So the, pe the poor people who are impacted by this the most, yes, this is the most impressive. don't get a say. They don't get to say, oh, we don't want our income taxes raised because, no, I'm talking about, he's talking about bipartisan, you know, uh, rejection of an income tax raise. So that's why this was fashioned as a sales tax raise, yeah. because the poor don't have a voice this is morally wrong, and it is going to cause children to go hungry. Okay. Yes. I, I appreciate it. your opinion. I do. Seven and a half percent of this goes to low-income families to improve their early childhood learning. The formula is equitable. Equitable. In terms of school districts that face particularly income-based challenges, get a bigger piece. Thousand teachers we had to certify emergency, and not all of those are bad. Some of that, one of the best teachers in my high school, he had to get an emergency certification every year because he clipped out of all his math taxes. But he, he taught calculus and physics, and there wasn't anybody else in the college that had to do that. So, um, not all emergency certifications are bad. But the uh, a study done by the University of Tulsa, that, and they, Tulsa gets this is way before this was ever happening. They're a private school; they didn't know this money, but they did find that low-income low te low teachers serving low-income student populations are less connected to their school and are more willing to leave. And so what you end up with is overall younger entry-level teachers going into these classrooms. Now, teachers, there are other studies that show teachers that whenever they hit year four and five become incre increasingly more productive in the classroom. I mean, you know, it takes a while to figure this out. I, it's, Tough profession, right? But they're leaving those low-income schools before them, and so and so. Whenever you just, I think it's been three or four weeks. Tulsa superintendent, superintendent who's awesome, by the way. Um, <clears throat> her applications for this for for this coming year, her overall applications are down forty percent. Now, whenever you post a like when Tulsa Public School or Oklahoma City Public School, whenever they post an opening, they post what school it is. And so where do you think the applications are the lowest? At the low income school. Of course. So, you know, overall, across the board, even the good schools can't hire. I mean, you talk to superintendents, they've had positions open, and they get two applicants when they used to get 40. Um, I understand, I understand your opinion. Um, I, th I think these are factors to consider, um, as, as well in weighing your vote. But I, I understand and respect your opinion. All right, I have a question here. College and career readiness, are private computer-based programs allowed? Uh, are, 
private and career based, or, I'm sorry, private and computer? Private computer based programs allowed in, college, in what you call college and career readiness in, in that funding. To the best of my knowledge, private, private no. So that the, either a private education institution or a private, what you've seen pop up like these like Trump University and <laughs> these kind of things. Right. To the best of my knowledge, no. It's Internet if a, school. But if a public university is offering that curriculum, I don't know that that would specifically, uh, I don't know that that would specifically be prohibited, especially if they can improve that it can make the college experience more affordable. What about charter schools? Charter schools, so this gets a little tricky. Yeah, that's and what I want to yeah. talk about. It gets a little tricky because uh, charter schools are on the formula. Do you know more about charter schools than I do? Mm, so, not so really. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to be. public schools right. because so they pull money from the education So department. they're on the formula and they right. have to. But they do not have to meet all the same requirements that we do. But they do have to meet the same per pupil spending, if I'm, no, if I'm correct. No, no. Because they don't have the brick and mortar expenses. And they don't have people looking at it, like the school board. Don't so the salary money goes. Right. I'm, I'm pretty certain of that. I do I do not know if the other those other mm -hmm. aid programs mm -hmm. go. And if I can send the follow-up to Calvin, he'll, he'll let you know. Is that, okay. is that fair to everyone? Who is OK United opposing in 779? Who? Like, who was that group? So yeah. there's a... I, I understand and whoever asked this know, question. What is it? Okay, so uh, David, you may be able to, to tell more about them than I am. This is a group that just kind of popped up. They do uh, what we call independent expenditure, expenditures, or you might be familiar with it as dark money, where they get big pots of money and they can advocate for or against an issue or a candidate, and nobody really knows who wrote the check or what, what perhaps their interest might be. Um, they were active in the Oklahoma City Mayor's race. Mm -hmm. They're spending heavily online against us, particularly in Oklahoma County. Um, it's got to be chamber related, I bet. But we don't know who sure. we don't know who they are, like to mm -hmm. the name. Um, I had a question about high, higher education. Um, it states that 9.25 percent will go to higher education. Mm -hmm. And um, that is to go into the education and general operating budget. And it quotes in the uh, paperwork, improving college affordability or otherwise in the improvement of higher education. Uh, what guarantees are there that that 19.25% will go towards tuition costs or other student fee costs and won't go into programs like athletics? So... Uh at your major university, at your flagship. So, number one, our higher ed institutions face different challenges everywhere. OU has a different <coughs> set of problems than UCO, than NSU, than Panhandle, right? Like, they all have unique uh, challenges that they're facing. Um, the So, at OU, which would be your biggest, and, and OSU, like, th those programs are almost entirely privately funded or generate their own revenue. So like ticket sales and uh, merch sales and, and, and things like that. So there's no specific need for them to support that. And and no university would get as a piece of this funding. Like nobody's going to get enough money to go build a stadium. Right? Well, I'm not saying that. I'm just asking what guarantees are there yeah. built into this bill mm -hmm. that that money will go directly towards helping students right. with the cost of tuition or fees. And isn't going to be. Mm -hmm. I know that says that can't be spent on like administrative costs or something like that in higher education, but it just feels that. I mean, that's a pretty big chunk of that money, and I just want to know: is there any guarantee. any guarantee in there that it won't? They just can't send it to the athletics, you know, to pay for you know like footballs well, part, and you, stuff. Okay. Just let me again the athletics thing. Like that's. I understand that why people would be concerned, but that's not reality, right? Like, you know, tuition dollars are not going <laughs> well, but, it, but, it's a bit, it, but it's up to them. It's up to them. Yeah. The Wait, Hold on just a moment. This, so I go to OU, and state dollars and tuition dollars are not allowed to go into athletics. It's a system built in within our university, and I'm pretty sure public universities have similar policies within their own universities, okay. so I'm not sure um, that it would come like the policy would come from this kind of yeah. like 
uh, literature. I don't know that mm -hmm, for, for sure. certain. I know that for OU. I don't know mm -hmm. that for... Well, athletics may be a bad example, but... Basically, you know, I've been in and out of school, and tuition just has gone up and sure, up and up. Sure. And I just want to know if there's any guarantee that this is going to go to help bring the tuition costs Again, back down. Again, college affordability mm -hmm. is, is put in there. Um, the There are several college presidents that, on their own personal time and are affiliated with, have specifically said that that is their intent with this revenue, to, to use this yeah. revenue for, to back that up. Unfortunately, I believe every higher ed education system through through their regions has, has approved some sort of yeah. uh, rate increase coming in. Mm -hmm. Well, Boren uh, pretty much spearheaded this. What is his thoughts as far as how OU will spend the money? He he has publicly, repeatedly, re repeatedly and repeatedly, he walks through like the, uh, the downward investment that the state has made say, since like back whenever he was, when he was governor, it was about 40% of a, a student's uh, college costs were paid. Uh, it's down to about 16% now, and that's before this latest cut to higher, higher ed. Mm -hmm. So they make that up in two of the most frustrating places, which is fees and tuition. Sorry. The guy in the back, sorry, sir, I forgot you. Uh, so one thing that's interesting in Oklahoma is we're the only state that only funds municipalities through sales tax. And, you know, there are people that feel that we have relatively high sales tax, relatively low property tax, and medium-low income tax. In a way, it seems like it's the last bullet in the chamber because we've waited for the legislature to do something and they haven't. Um, you know, you know my, my fear is that if it passes, the legislature will go, oh, let's fund the government through sales tax. And if it doesn't pass, like what you said, oh, see, people don't care about education. So I'm a little fearful sort of both ways. But the overall question that I have, which we, we you know talked about a little bit, which is what really stops, much like the lottery, when you know it was sold to us that this is going to be additive, this is going to be on top. But what most people feel is that overall the spending for education didn't change much because the legislature just defunded certain yeah. things so it stayed level. Same what, thing with what really rates. stops the legislature from you know potentially defunding mm -hmm. other parts of the education budget that this mm -hmm. takes care of? But then the money doesn't become additive, it just becomes shifted to something else. Because it seems like the legislature can still fund education at certain levels by changing, you know, by a majority vote. I mean, and I mean, I, I think we all want more education, and we just sort of want to be sure that we feel that's going to yeah. you know, stick and count. And that's the feeling I get from people that I talk with. Yeah, let me answer it in a couple different ways. And you're really good at explaining this, and I really appreciate it, and I understand exactly how Melody feels also. Let me understand, let me explain it a couple of ways. Does anybody know how much the lottery brings in yearly for, for education? Not much. <laughs> I thought I read it was like $3 million or something it's, like So that. it's $64 million oh, total. it's a lot more than that? Okay. And that's cut in half. 32 goes to K-12, 32 goes to higher ed. Okay, so 64 million. Now it was projected by its opponents <laughs> to bring in a lot more, but really part of that is, it was just projected on, you know, we're going to we're going to sell this many tickets based upon like what other states have done. Well, everybody's got lottery now, and so the market just isn't what it was. So it doesn't bring in what was projected. So that now in contrast, because sales are hard to predict, and you're dealing with the market. In contrast, sales tax collections. Are relatively stable over time historically in Oklahoma. So this is a easier, easier way, a more uh, a more, a more concrete way to to predict the revenue and make sure that it's it's going to be enough to pay for the programs we have. So 64 million. You know, we're projecting that uh, with passage, 779 could inject about 600 million into the uh, into the education program. So that's quite a bit of difference on scale, right? Number one. Um, and, and I apologize, let me finish. And, and this is a little bit more uh, lined out towards specific programs. What is the guarantee that it won't be, uh, that the technical word is supplanted, that the money that we're spending for education now could somehow be undermined? <clears throat> the uh, there's some pretty strict language in there that if uh, the State Board of Education Equalization finds that uh, they, the legislature has supplanted 
the funding for programs that they can't issue, basically they can't issue another appropriation until they replace the, the, the money uh, that they supplanted, that they removed somehow. So it's, it's a, there, there's an administrative process to, uh, to protect those funds and keep them there. Um, as well as a as well as a legal process, which again, we went the constitutional amendment route to make it as solid as possible, um, and that raised our threshold. That doubled the amount of signatures that we had to collect. Um, you know, it, make, it makes it much more difficult, but it also makes it much. Well, more let me let me just make the point though. I, I agree that the, the wording is such that the money has to be used, that the new tax money that's brought in to be used for X. But it doesn't seem like there's as much solid concrete ability for them to not take away the money that they're funding now. I, David, can we, while we're looking, yeah, yeah, I mean, can, we, can I come, can we do another question? And well, let's go back to this young, this lady here. Too. Yeah, I could be wrong. <laughs> too, I, mean, I, uh, I agree that any sales tax is a regressive tax, that it's going to hurt the low income the worst, but each individual child or teenager that's in school only gets one year in first grade, only one year in the 10th grade or whatever, but they only have the one go around in each grade and our legislature has already showed that they don't care. So I see this as a way to help the, the students. And they're the ones needing the help. Even if the 5000 goes to the teachers, that's going to help at least maybe we won't have the worst teachers in the country. Well, we don't. We, yeah, have, we, we just actually, have the lowest pay. We have the lowest worst. pay. We're actually half in the nation. So they're getting their 49th as teachers, right? Lowest paid teachers. Lowest paid teachers. by now? This yeah, past okay. So 50th lowest paid were the last paid and they are getting the and they're still making what right 20 they're right in 25th or 27th? I think it's 27th. Right. I think that's what it was. So they're they deserve their pay. So oh, they're not, I agree they're not <laughs> But in, in case anybody ever says that teachers are the worst here well, we are 27th well, and <coughs> You would have yeah. to assume that if you can get more money elsewhere, that most of them are going to go. Now, I, I guess I don't really mean the worst because my own little child is a teacher, and I'm sure she is a wonderful teacher. <laughs> uh, okay, so Nadine had a question, if you don't mind. I, um, <clears throat> I am a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I have a variety of things that I've written down here. Um, this is being called the one cent. But I just read it. This is actually 1%, which would now put Oklahoma, we would have the highest sales tax in the nation. Which so I think, overall, I think okay. uh, when, because I hear, I go to these mayoral things, people say, we're going to bring companies. Companies aren't coming here because <laughs> our schools are terrible. Um, and we have now, we will now have the highest sales tax in the nation, which is a regressive tax. And, and I'd love to know the people that did that study. I want to get that from you because my experience is the complete opposite. I teach. I spend thirty dollars a week on food because my kids eat in my classroom because they don't eat. Um, I just, I think the time and energy spent on this because all of these organizations great support this, but every teacher I know is opposed to it, um, would be better spent doing something else. I come from New Jersey. <laughs> Raise property taxes and <coughs> just do it. Change, spend the money to work with us when we change one seat and another seat and another seat because this is bad news. This is bad news for poor people and Oklahoma has a very high percentage of people living in poverty. And 1% makes the difference between my kids come to school in the same clothes they had last year because I don't have the money to buy the clothes for my six kids. And I just can't support this in I, any way shape or form and i think your language here in this is very weak I, I i don't know how you make the state legislature do something that they don't want to do they cannot this says the legislature shall not make any appropriations for the ensuing fiscal year until an appropriation in that amount is made to replenish the oklahoma education improvement fund i i see that <laughs> these people that i've dealt with they'll go home there will be no funding 
They would rather well, go home. They're constitutionally required to pass a Well, but they see that they're constitutionally required to do all these things, and, and then at some point, I just don't see it how that enforced. I mean, I mean, it's I, not enforceable. How are you going to enforce this? The, can, yeah. I, can I read the language Hold for everybody? Hold on a second. That was a good question. How are you going to enforce this? Let me read the language. Yes, I just did. So this is section five of the uh, of, of the initiative, um, subsection A. Money is expended or distributed from the Oklahoma Education Improvement Fund shall supplement and shall not supplant or relate yeah. other state funds supporting common education. And then just to save us time, it lists a string of current uh, existing education programs like early childhood and uh, the lottery um, and some other stuff. So. Uh, so that's the piece right there that they can't the, the money has to be on the top it has to supplement and cannot supplant this is the first rule. Okay. subsection B uh, the legislature shall appropriate the monies from the Oklahoma Education Improvement Fund solely to supplement other funds supporting common education early childhood education higher education or career tech the legislature shall not appropriate such monies to supplant or replace any other state funds supporting common education or the other educational things that just mentioned. Subsection C, this is the enforcement piece. In order to ensure that the monies from the Oklahoma Education Improvement Fund are used to enhance and not supplant funding for education, the State Board of Equalization shall examine and investigate appropriations from the fund each year. At the meeting of the Board of Education, Equalization held within five days after the monthly apportionment in February of each year, the Board of Equalization shall issue a finding report that shall state whether appropriations from the Oklahoma Education Improvement Fund were used to enhance or supplant education funding. If the Board of Equalization finds that education funding was supplanted by monies from the Improvement Fund, the Board of Equalization shall, spe shall specify the amount which was supplanted. So the amount that, can, that in, under this hypothetical is missing. Okay. In this event, the legislature shall not make any appropriations for the ensuing fiscal year until an appropriation in that amount is made to replenish the Oklahoma Education Improvement Fund. But how do you make that happen? Well, that, that's, that's, <coughs> okay, so that's yeah. how he'll, he'll go to court. But let me ask you this. According, what was the name of the guy who, or the person that they'll put in charge of this? Who, who designs that? Who puts that person in, in charge? charge of, of what? Of, of catching the, the, the state board of equalization. So it's the state yeah. board of equalization, which David, if you want, can you would you mind googling that and telling us the membership? Of okay. uh, the board. It's a, it's it's by position though, right? If you're state board of equalization. Yeah, it's like Preston Dorflinger and then maybe Ken Miller, <laughs> the director of finance, state treasurer. Right. So is it a good board or is it like, is a shady board? <laughs> yeah. Well, some are elected and probably some are appointed, and most are probably appointed by the you know governor. Speaker and so it's another term. So it's, 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 it's some of it. Some of as I understand it, and I apologize, I don't know all the membership. Sorry, some yeah, of it's they hold the constitutional office, and like one of the duties of their office is to serve on this board. Um, some of them are appointments, but I would assume by the House leadership and the Senate leadership, but also the uh, I don't know if the governor has an appointment or not, but to answer your ultimate question, like politically, if, if you're worried about those people at this time, and just remember, 10 years ago, those were all Democrats. Um, <laughs> politically, <laughs> politically the, the, your, your, your ultimate uh, fight would be in the legal system. The okay. That, thank you so much for clarifying that. I think that's the biggest concern everybody's got. And, you know, so, so, on that board. so basically what it says is that the, the, the state legislature basically cannot reduce education spending any more than it already has been. Because if any education is, funding is reduced, it could be, the argument could be made that then this money would be going to. That's correct. And there's an important note here, if I could follow up on it. Briefly, you know, the governor has issued uh, that special session be considered to reappropriate this money. Um, you know, a huge chunk of this money goes to education. It's about 40 million, including our textbook fund that they completely zeroed out. Mm -hmm. So it's important that that money goes to its intended appropriated purpose, which includes on top of the education and the textbook fund, corrections, Department of Health, uh, and other agencies that are 
I mean, we're cutting tissue and bone over there. Put the money back. But so to get to that, that money then could not be supplanted in the future. The 40 million also goes back to education. Uh, there was a question in the back, right? Yes. So sorry. Oh, that's fine. Um, so my concern is we have there's all these. This seems kind of like a short-term fix to a problem that's going to extend far beyond just this year because of the way our education is funded through property taxes. I live on the east side. Uh, the east side is the poorest area in the city. It's the highest rate of crime. That's high youth unemployment um, and, and large rates of like single mothers with children. Um, and so we've talked about the regressive nature, but I think what we're neglecting is this is a constitutionally mandated regressive tax. So how are we going to be able to appeal that in the future if, if our sales tax does get too high? Well, then my other people. concern is um, the way our cities are run and the way I mean, from the bottom up, uh, they're run consistently cutting taxes at every level. And so I don't think raising the one tax that hurts poor people is the way to address um, the cuts to income and property taxes. Then we go back into limbo and we do nothing about it. Well, yeah, but if yeah. you look at the tax structure in places like Texas and Washington that have no income tax, they're completely reliant um, on sales taxes and they have these huge poor populations that don't benefit from the public education system because they're so stuck in working uh, with their families, they're unable to perform an outside activity. Um, you talked about the multiplier effect, which to me is sort of like an extension of trickle down economics yes. that won't really work if you have all these people. Uh, you know, un the making under the poverty line, and the poverty line in Oklahoma is even lower than the federal poverty line. If you're putting all of this weight on their back, how are they going to benefit from this system? And I especially want to address, you know, the black community, because that is um, my community, and I think they'll be the community that's most hurt by this, um, considering this will open up uh, more opportunities for payday lenders to um, yes. extend their reign on the east side. Oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, I just think we've talked about a lot of short-term implications, but there's all these long-term impacts that I've seen on the east side for 10 years. Sure. So living I, I could answer some of this. Yes, yeah. I do. The, <laughs> so the long-term implication <laughs> is we're living in it right now. That we've underfunded education. We've and underfunded there's been no, nobody's had a, a viable mechanism to increase funding in education. And so that, now, that number, we're living in the long-term problem right now. That this, and, I, and I said, I'm not promising a silver bullet. Mm -hmm. um, and some of it, some of the issues that I think you would see the education community like to address. You just can't get done in one vehicle. Like it's legally, legally you can't do it. You can only address uh, one thing at a time, basically. So we could have ran five questions, but we would have lost. And we wouldn't have the, the resources to, to support and educate on that. So uh, I would argue that it's not, a, that, that you know, it's a fix to the long-term solution that we bought ourselves. Um, I would go back to the programs that I mentioned earlier that address low income areas. I would go back to the equitability of state funding formula as we know it. And I would go back to something that I think that we can all agree on that moving out of uh, the, the best path out of a low income situation, one of, the, one of the most trusted is a quality education which we are struggling to offer now in every, in, in nearly every community in Oklahoma. Did you? Uh, no, uh, hold on. Hold yeah, on. Let's, we have to allow other people. Yeah. Yeah. We really have so much time. Sorry. Okay. Mine's more, I guess, a concern, a statement. I think, and I think it's kind of everyone's issue is, it's kind of a Hail Mary. Yeah. We, we don't have any trust in our legislation anymore, so we've taken mm -hmm. it on our own backs to try to do something, which you guys do, and I commend you for that. The problem is that we all see is, is We'll fight anything in this state that doesn't make any sense. I mean, we, we go to the courts all the time for, for stuff that doesn't make any sense. And so even though it's protected there, our legislation's proven that they aren't really care. They're gonna still do what they wanna do. And I know you can't 100% say that you guarantee it's gonna be there. Well, what's our steps after this? Say this does pass, how do we go about now making legislation push to still make it better? This gives the teachers a $5,000 pay raise, it's great. What about after? Don't forget the other stuff. Yeah, I mean, what about like in school? I mean, I can pay them a million dollars a year, but if they don't have anything to teach with. What are we going to do? Yeah, I. Uh, it, your statement's well taken. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I can't speak for those for those organizations in any official capacity whatsoever. So this is personal. Yeah. Opinion that I've but but it's based upon conversations I've had with members of the profession and the legislature and other things. I mean, I think, I, I think you're right that we got to look at 
our testing structure and make sure that the changes we made make sense. Um, I think you're uh, right that uh, not only we, you know, did we zero out our, te our textbook fund, like how are these districts going to buy computers to prepare for a you know, technological age and how are they going to, um, so I mean I would hope that members of the coalition uh, that hopefully they're successful with this and they, they choose to get together and work on a program with teachers or with, with teachers and with parents important about what are some common sense steps that we can take right now given our budget challenges if, you know they may need to be revenue neutral but what can we do to support these teachers who ultimately are these kids and are some changes Susan, mm -hmm. I, okay you go well right. it kind of piggybacks off what you just said I and maybe what you said a minute ago I mean I I go out and help a lot of candidates I you know I knock I'm a, I'm a door knocker I love that stuff and you know this year in particular um, you know of course probably because some of the candidates are educational mm -hmm. candidates some of them and it's being really highlighted you know but the very one of the very first things that is said to me as far as concerns you know it, it, especially with younger people is education and their and the students and how poorly funded the schools are and so on and uh, but I, and and you know and I hope you know it looks as if you're it's going to pass your state question at least at this point but if it and I know that if it doesn't it'll set back teachers you know issues for a little while and you know because they'll say people don't want to be taxed but I challenge that because I, because of my experience out here on the doors, and be, in, particularly here in Oklahoma City, which Oklahoma City is very poorly funded, the public schools here, but it, is that I think that it's such a crescendo of shame and, and dislike of the conditions of teachers, the students. You know, I mean, Nadine, I hear stories from her school. I, you know, I hear stories from all of these schools. It's so horrific that I think it's inevitable that the, the uh, that number one will have a better opportunity to elect more educational you know pro-educational driven candidates anyway. I think that we have the chance to you know promote promote this in a better way as a party to get more candidates elected to have these issues be significant to not overkill uh, sales tax which affects people who are, are without money that are on disability or whatever their circumstances are poor poverty is so high like you said I don't give up on if it doesn't pass I think that the cry outcry to do something about this is so strong that I hope that as a party you know I, even independence whatever that we recognize that it is our issue mm -hmm. it is the key issue here is how do we fund <coughs> education properly without having it be on people on the backs of people who don't have money. I, I just think it's a, a rallying cry. I know so how. One they way know or the how. other. One way or the other. I don't Raise think it's the gross production for us. tax back to and I know 7%. how to do it. I know how to do yeah. it. Legalize marijuana mm -hmm. for recreational use. Yes. Yeah. Eliminate the the in, in income tax. Mm -hmm. Eliminate your income tax. <laughs> Colorado has more money than they know what Colorado to do. Colorado is giving money back to its citizens. Get it done. Like, I don't even think it's going to make the ballot for Memphis. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, right. You're right. So, yeah. like, well, again, we're back in hypotheticals. I could give you My grandson, I've taken over, the, over his education. Uh, he's going to feel more school in South Carolina City. I understand the fees that students pay, you know, the $20, because when we were kids, we paid 2 3 a year for fees, which would pay for our paper and stuff like that. This year, I paid $100, on $100.18 for the material that we always got free from our fees. I'm not, I don't, it don't hurt me to pay the $100. But every person in Oklahoma City School District mm -hmm. had to do it for the first time this year. <coughs> if you had three kids and you had the same class as mm -hmm. my kid had, that's $300. This is not going to be taken care of by that payment sales tax or 1% sales tax, whatever it is. 1%. Um, it's 1%. 1 1%. 1%. 1 it's in the law. It's one for 100 since you that's, yeah, the same, that's the same difference. Okay. That's six. 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 
Okay. No, it's but what, it's but what say what it is. I would like to know. <laughs> I saw a poll, I believe I saw a poll from Sooner Poll, mm -hmm. and they did it. Now, I saw what happened in Kansas this mm -hmm. Tuesday. I mean, they kicked ass. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, well, have you guys got the anger issue polled on this? Are we going to be voting incumbents out that, you know, this coming year? Count <laughs> I, That's a, uh, a it's, it's a good question. And, and, uh, I can tell you, I, let me go at this a couple different ways. Not the, and I keep on saying that number one. But the first, so in our, in our polling, which is very recent, we tested uh, on this issue. Would you find this person or entity trustworthy or not on, on the issue of education and funding? The, whenever you ask them if they trust the state legislature, they're like 24% trustworthy. Yeah. And like in the form is <coughs> not trustworthy. Yeah, I bet. On this issue. I bet. When you ask about your local state legislature, because we're all familiar with that, like, you know, mm -hmm. I know everybody sucks except mine. Yeah. 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 They, they, they bump yeah. up to 34%. Mm -hmm. Whenever you, <coughs> Mary Fallon is upside down as I'll get out on this. Um, but that's, speci that's specifically on this issue. The other thing that just being, if knowing Kansas, uh, a little bit different than here, there are actually moderate Republicans <laughs> in Kansas. Um, that this was a sw that was a swing for them, and I think you know, if they, yeah. they are electing D's, and I think going back more it will, will do something for them. But it's a different, it's a different electorate, a different infrastructure <laughs> than than what we have currently. Is the environment right to take out an incumbent? The right candidate in the right district with the right campaign? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on the table. But they got 94 days to, to make that case. And those were primaries in Kansas, more yeah. so not no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah primary no. Right. Oh, it's okay. Um, I wanted to just ask, this is creating a new constitution, or an amendment. It's going to change, It's. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to create a new article to the Oklahoma Constitution. And, you know, why it kind of hit on that a little bit. Um, and... Anytime you're going to change the Constitution, of course, there's going to be opposition to it. In the case that this passes, um, who takes on the responsibility for defending that through the court system? And because that will have a lot of cost associated with it as well. Is that going to be on the state's back to defend it through the court system? Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I would say if, if say they. Say it passes and mm -hmm. they, they supplant in, in some way that we feel is legally not acceptable. Yeah. I, I would suggest, now I can't promise for them, but I would suggest that the coalition that passes would find the legal resources to to, to remedy that in their opinion, that they, mm -hmm. they feel this money is passed. And in all and the research. Point, you would, I would assume that the AG's office would, would have to defend the State Board of Equalization and the State Yeah. That's well, if guess. this passes, who do you think is going to try to challenge it? What ground are they going to have to challenge it on as far as the oh, legality we, so we've been to court four different times before. yeah um in buttoning up this language the attorney general has rewritten the language um you know everybody's <coughs> taking a stab at it too and I, to will you be able to go back between now and the in the election at, at, at the court level uh with the attorney general as far as this language the We're, we we are on the ballot well okay we are pending Governor Fallon's proclamation to put us officially on the ballot. The only legal wrangling that we anticipate between now and then is that if she fails to act, we would be compelled to, to litigate against her to. So you don't see like any further buttoning down of the policy details of it? No, we've been through the, okay. the, 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 the language is set the only thing that is not said at this point is the election day. So you're saying Mary Fallon needs to approve this to make it onto the ballot? She, she yeah. as, as, as the process works, the final step is that the Secretary of State notifies mm -hmm. the governor's office that we have cleared all legal challenges, that we have cleared the petition process, and that you, we've, we've cleared it all and we're pending a election day that's the only that's but that's all she has she okay. can't 
Well, I know she's trying to call this special session right. to address it. She can't rewrite it or anything um, like that. Is there a possibility that she can delay it and it would not make it to the ballot in November? So, you know, depending on what she or her political advisors, like they might, they may try to say, well, we'll just do a special election in March. But, uh, very expensive. Yeah. yeah politically long untenable. Long yeah, long, long, long. It, it was the first one to make it through everything. It's most likely going to be on the November ballot. Mm -hmm. And, and okay. we, we are willing to take legal action to, okay. to move that along. And the other one is about um, how are you getting your petition signers? Are they through fan access? Uh, so is that the question, or do you are want you to know? Are you going to you're going to tag everything? So we so the, through the course of this, we got 300,000 signatures of people who were willing, not necessarily supporters, but they were willing to put it to a vote. Yeah. Uh, Can I interrupt you for a minute? Because I watched those. They lied to people boldface, and if I would have known how to challenge this petition, I would have. I watched them at both Bernie Sanders events say, "Do you want to sign a petition for teacher pay increases?" Which is not what that petition says. And I think that that is a bold-faced lie. We went through an extensive. I'm just telling. Training. I watched them do it. I watched. I, I watched them as well. Everybody can read it. It, the, it was not, wrong. Not the things. gist is on. It's I trust at the, the top people. Of the page. The, uh, I'm just telling you that I watched it. Do you I'm want sorry, to sign I'm a petition experience. for teacher pay sorry, raises? I'm not yeah. Yeah. But are you going to scan it and try to? So, scan everybody? so the the first thought was that we would try to do it manually. Too expensive. Too time-consuming. The, we've, we've gone through a process and we found a vendor that actually they do medical records, handwritten medical records and charts, and so they take those and convert them into digital characters. So we we found a vendor that can do that. We think it's you know it's it's expensive, but not nearly as expensive as uh, just trying to pay somebody to do them all by hand or or, waste, or using your volunteers to do that. Um, so right now we're trying to figure out. How informative that is for our election um, in terms of, uh, you know, are people for the pay raise or do they want this other stuff too? Um, but you have a copy of all the. I, have a I could do it if I had the funding. I could you do could rescan it, it and if the technology. I could do it tomorrow. Year I could turn the handwriting into digital, yeah. match it to the to registered voters, and upload it into Van. I mm -hmm. can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, worth, we're, we're testing it right now to see if it's worth it for us. Can I uh, ask a question? Mm -hmm. um, what does your campaign, what does your campaign think that the likelihood that this will pass? I mean, do they, do they see this pass? Polling looks good. Yeah. So the, if we run the right campaign, I think we're positioned well. The polling looks good now, but it's inflated. Mm -hmm. um, just naturally, in, in any state, when you ask somebody to vote yes on something, it's a harder election automatically than if you're asking them to vote no. Mm -hmm. It's automatically this. Um, the, you know, the, our opposition's message, confusion is king um, in terms of, oh, well, it's not going to do this or that or, you know, uh, and, you know, we're, well, we're, 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 we're trying to present, you know, at least the start of a holistic solution to, to education funding here. It doesn't do everything. Mm -hmm. um, and if they get their hooks, you know, on one particular issue, then, then we lose voters. And then you lose voters naturally because it's a yes campaign. And then ultimately, people get to the ballot box and they support campaigns, but they have questions about the funding there. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, and the impact. <coughs> We've, we feel like we can get our story, the stories of teachers and students and parents out mm -hmm. about the shape that education is in. Um, if we and, and if we can convince people that this money is going where they were promised, mm -hmm. and so like so you have to go through the whole program that we can come out. At. Um, but that's expensive. It's more. It's about three times more expensive for us to convince to move people to yes than it is just to just. To, Tap into the cynicism and say, well, no. Have you done any polling? Mm -hmm. So, what is your actual polling number? It's very similar to the general poll to, to, to the, the number that was published. They yeah. had it at 62. I can't. 62, okay. And, and what wasn't there, you know, the, the, the question before to try to raise teacher pay a few years ago, it was polling positively too and went down in flames. Just collapsed yeah. in the last you know, few and years. It was a different time mm -hmm. but, and it was a different type of <laughs> campaign. Mm -hmm. you know, so, but that's it's not. Yeah. 
it's not uncommon for efforts like this across the nation to, to be, it, be it in the 60s now mm -hmm. and to lose on election day. Well, I would like to say one thing. I appreciate, I mean, I know that there's some difficulties with this and concerns about it and everything. The one thing I will say about it positively is that by so doing, this running this effort, look at what it has created. It's created an urgency, even more of an urgency with the Republican Party here in the state through Mary Fallon and different people that has made them that they want to even try to deal with this at this time. And it is, you know, so I think it's having a positive effect from that from that perspective, regardless of how it turns out. The conservative party line has always been, you know, we don't need more funding. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, in Tulsa in the primary, their mayor's race was on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And is the eight-year incumbent Dewey Bartlett of the Bartlett family, um, popular personally, long history, he lost in a primary to a Republican challenging from the middle. And education was one of the defining issues. Mm -hmm. And one of the key disagreements was the guy who won his support for this versus the incumbent who was opposed to it. Mm -hmm. And the guy who won out won performed all expectations. Right, exactly. And ended it without a, without a runoff. So. Yeah, well anyway, I mean, that's one, I, wanted, I, wanted, I want to say don't, you know, think that just all of the, con the concerns about it and stuff negate that it, it's not a good, I mean, it's not a, a necessary effort right now, because it is. I appreciate that. Yeah. I just, I, I'll throw in, you know, I, it, it's upsetting to me a little bit that Thorne, in a way, took away the legislature's responsibility. Well, it's yeah. kind of like they're not doing their job. But by that was one of the biggest gifts the legislature could have. It's like, oh, well, we don't have to figure out funding. We don't necessarily have to tax oil and gas or, you know, stop the income tax. And it's just one of those, you know, best, worst, you know, solutions. But, you know. I, I understand that argument. Uh, two, two things. Number one, I think, I think urgency is real here. Like, we have to start doing something now. And we can wait for them to do oil and gas or income or wind or whatever they're going to do yeah, yeah, or we can take a step the, the other but the, to the other argument that oh you're letting the legislature off the, the legislature off the hook maybe or maybe not i'd argue we're putting them on the hook number one they got to show a position on this before november they won't if, right. everybody's going to have to pick a side yeah and they you know this is concrete it's not something that they go home to their district and they're like Oh, you know, we tried this yeah. bill, but it yeah. didn't work, and lost in committee, and they could kind of exactly. PS their way out of it, like this mm -hmm. is black and white. Mm -hmm. um, you have to pick a side. Mm -hmm. I know, I would argue with that. I've yeah. talked to several uh, people who are up for election. They're like, well, you know, I'm still trying to decide on that. I think teachers are important, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, it's so tough because, and they like get away the pros well, and cons. Well, that's because I haven't that gotten a straight answer out of very many politicians. Because I know a lot of most every teacher I work with, most teachers that I know are opposed to this. So. Well, I mean, I, I can. I I've got know thousands one. Of well, okay, but I, I just my entire everybody that I know that's a teacher is opposed to it because we teach it with these right. people who are going to be adversely impacted by this. I and it also takes away that. Yes, the teachers are running over here like, hurry up, you know, hit the poor people for uh, 1% uh, while the state is bleeding. You know, I mean, it's, it, it feels morally bankrupt to say, hey, screw you, social and children's welfare, we don't care. Yeah. We're going to get the teachers. It just feels wrong all there, the way around on every level. I heard an argument, and if I can share with you, sure. uh, the argument is, you know, we don't like the way it went or the way we, this is going to the 779, but it is the only viable That's option. Key. And I've heard that from a teacher um, who is saying that, you know, basically, um, if we don't do this, we're dead in the water next year, and the next year, and the next year. I mean, we, you um, can, That's what I've heard. This could fail, and you can wait on the legislature to do something. <laughs> yeah. Right. So and that's the argument some candidates are getting. Um, you know. I mean, they they have failed for so long to do this, and we got to take over ownership here. Republicans and Democrats have, you know, mm -hmm. have led to some of this tax structure problems that we have. Um, so, so I just wanted to say that there is, like, I have heard that argument. However, you know, from what you've said today, 
I'm still, I'm still not convinced that this is the right answer. As a person, I'm not. Well, a I would, that may be a good, and I respect it, and that may be a good note to end it on. No, um, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we don't have to find well, it. No, to piggyback, right. to piggyback off what she said. You're not talking to me. You have to listen to me. Go out and talk to parents mm -hmm. and teachers and kids and, and, and ask their stories. If you if, if yeah. you don't have a grasp of the situation, ask their specific yeah. story because it's not just uh, you know my sister. You, you know it's it's going to be hard. We're a better way to put the kids in college, but it's going to be it's going to be a little bit harder than it should be. It should be a little bit easier. Yeah. Talk to the school board member who. You know, he or she got elected to the school board to help their kids, and they're instead they're cutting their field trips or increasing their tax sizes. Like, go talk to them. I mean, I'm, I'm a political hack. I care about this, but you know, ultimately, I'm biased. Go talk to teachers and students and parents and, and listen to their stories and, and make your decisions. I vote.